started, I guess my first audio project was uh, building a crystal radio, and I suppose a lot of people ended up that way. I, uh, I got a kit for Christmas, it was a birthday pr uh, present from my mom, and I built this crystal radio and I was really turned on by that, that was really fun, there were maybe three parts involved. And, uh, and then the next thing, I got a transformer and some wire and I put a light out in the tree out in the, in the woods and I hooked up this rheostat that I got out of this car that was in the junkyard and I made the light go up and down and I thought that was really exciting too. So then I was kind of hooked on electronics. But as a kid I really enjoyed music and I did a lot of music listening and um, on some very cheap headphones that I bought uh, with my allowance. And uh, then in high school I found myself being quite involved in the theater program and I built a speaker system for our auditorium and I also operated the lighting and I was actually offered the lead role in the high school play it was uh, Death of a Salesman but I was more interested in doing the audio so I did that instead and uh, I got progressively more interested in music as time went on and I thought I wanted to get a career in, uh, in uh, working in a recording studio so um, but I wasn't going to get away without getting a university education so then I was faced with, well, what would I study? And I decided to go into electrical engineering, and I did that at McGill University in Montreal. And uh, when I graduated from university, I, uh, I came to Toronto, and I went around to a whole bunch of studios, Sounds Interchange, uh, Manta, um, a whole bunch of them, and I gave them my resume, and I said, I'd love to work here, and... Uh, and, uh, and then I even went out to, uh, I sent letters to Pinewood out in Vancouver and so on, and uh, I got some very nice letters back saying, you know, if you'd like to come and, and push a broom, uh, maybe we can find a job for you. And uh, I decided not to do that. And I ended up uh, working for Strand Century in, uh, in Toronto. They had a division where they were doing um, audio installations. So the first audio job I worked on uh, was the rewiring of the uh, O'Keeffe Center. And um, during that, um, after we got that installed, there were these fancy consultants who'd come over from England and they'd put this big component audio system in place, uh, lots of different drivers, JBL, uh, the, the little uh, radial phase plug high tweeter, tweeter and then there were biradial horns and it was like a four-way system and I remember them agonizing over equalizing the system and they spent weeks at it and I was sitting through all of that and then this show came into town called Beatlemania which was using these uh, boxes that uh, were just a full range box and they threw them on up on either side of the stage and that sounded way better than uh, than this system that these guys had been agonizing over at the O'Keeffe Center. And I kind of got really hooked at that point on what made for good sound. So I then worked for a number of different uh, contracting companies for years. And um, the more I got into the audio business, uh, the more I realized that there were some really big gaps in understanding and in the um, just the basic fundamentals of how interconnection worked. And that's when I uh, decided to, um, to write my book and kind of really try and put paid to the issue of connectivity and grounding and how to build audio systems and so on. And so I, um, I started working on my book. And then um, the firm I was with at the time, which was Gear Audio, um, we saw a bit of a downturn and it was time for me to leave. So I left that company and I went around and I, was, I interviewed at Ward Beck and McCurdy and a bunch of places and I had to decide what to do with myself and I decided to start my own business in the consulting end of things, which is really probably what I wanted to do all along, but in Canada in those days there really wasn't, there weren't too many places to work if you wanted to be a designer. So I, um, I started my own business and that was 20 years ago. Um, we started out pretty small in a bedroom just like all these recording studios that start in garages and basements these days, I started in a bedroom. And, um, um, boy, the first big break we got was uh, Studio One at, at uh, TV Ontario. Uh, I did that project, and, um, and then Sounds Interchange came along, and I got involved in the expansion of sounds. 
then it looked like there were going to be a series of other, other projects. This was in the early 90s. And then the whole audio industry, at least the recording side and production side, really started to change dramatically. And all of those projects um, just fell away. And our business got more involved in other things like audiovisual systems. And, um, and at the same time, um, uh, we were pursuing performing arts center work. And that work started to, um, to take off. Our first big, uh, big project was uh, North York Performing Arts Center. Um, on the basis of that, we got, we got more and more work. So uh, that was 20 years ago. Um, today, we're, um, we're uh, much bigger, much more organized. We're doing projects uh, around the world. And, um, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, I, uh, it's been uh, it's been a great um, journey, and uh, I'm not done yet. I'm not quite sure where uh, where we're going to end up. We continue to find new markets. Uh, we're working in Dubai, and um, got a project in Moscow, and um, certainly uh, keeping uh, keeping the 20 people working for us busy is a is a good challenge. Uh, but it's uh, it's one that I'm going to look forward to. One of the interesting challenges that faces us as an organization today is simply the fact that a lot of what was cutting edge engineering um, is actually becoming uh, almost commoditized. And so a lot of the work that we would agonize over uh, years and years ago is, uh, is done by a database program or an AutoCAD routine or whatever. And so um, on the one hand, you're challenged with the fact that there's lots of inexpensive uh, labor overseas, um, which can do, uh, can do engineering work quite, quite easily. Um, and, um, and the other, so there's that challenge as an engineering company. And then, and then the, the other side of that is how can we, at, on this side of the ocean, make ourselves as absolutely efficient as possible so that we can uh, compete with those kinds of uh, low-cost engineering resources because, because the engineering part is becoming uh, an off-the-shelf commoditized thing. Um, there's an awful lot about our business that's a lot more, well, a lot more understood and a lot, a lot more sort of off-the-shelf. So, so the challenge, I believe, going forward is essentially the one of the, what I would call the creative economy. That's not a new term. And uh, we see ourselves um, being involved in the very top layer of the projects, um, not as much as engineers, but as uh, consultants, um, understanding the client's requirements, the client's vision, and putting together essentially a program that will deliver on, on what they're trying to achieve as an organization. The, the engineering side is, is, um, is, is a consequence of that. So from the point of view of protecting our, uh, our sort of intellectual property and pushing that forward, which of course is, is what we're always trying to do, is find the fun, exciting stuff to work on. That's where, that's where we see ourselves bringing, bringing the value. So, um, so being a part of the creative economy is, is, uh, is where we, I think we need to be and what we're, we're striving to do. So much of what goes on nowadays has a very, very large um, IT component to it. Um, most of the signal processing that occurs nowadays is, is done in a computer. And those signals are transmitted over data lines. Um, and, uh, and that's becoming a very important part of the business because that's where, um, where you're able to uh, get your economies of scale and make a lot of things happen in an exciting in a fast way, which is really what everybody seems to want these days. So uh, part of our ongoing education program at work is, is, is bringing more and more IT into the office. Uh, we manage our own IT systems, and we have several guys who are, uh, who are pretty, pretty savvy at that. And I think being on top of the, the IT subject and uh, is, is going to be critical to everybody in our industry moving forward. And we see that today with the young people who come in who, who've got great computer skills and as a result are, 
very fast at, uh, at doing CAD work and using CAD tools and, and all of that. It uh, makes older folks like me um, thankful that those younger people are there. <laughs>